It's something for, for everybody out here. It's a place that you hear the wind, you know, you hear the birds. It's a place that uh, we want the visitor to keep a tradition. Bring their families back. The next generation brings their family back. We're looking to pass on traditions to enjoy the park. The park has so much to offer. Uh, whatever you're looking for, it seems like we, we've got it. Big Bend Ranch State Park truly does have nearly anything you could want for your outdoor adventure. From camping, hiking, and mountain biking, to four-wheel drive roads, river trips, and stargazing, Big Bend Ranch is a year-round desert adventure destination. Come along as we give you all you need to know to make your first Big Bend Ranch trip a fun and safe adventure. George Howard bought land in 1905 in what is now Big Bend Ranch to add to his nearby tracts. These tracts, along with others, were sold to the four Bogle brothers in the 1910s. It was a ranch, a working ranch. And at one time, this place you know, had something like 9,000 sheep. I mean, it was like, incredible. And of course, it also had a lot of cattle. Their headquarters buildings make up the Sauceda headquarters. The Great Depression and drought caused the Bogles to sell their 38,000-acre ranch to Manny and Edwin Folks in 1934. The Folks later expanded their holdings to nearly 300,000 acres. Once again, drought forced the sale of the ranch in 1958. In 1969, Robert Anderson bought the ranch as part of the Diamond A Cattle Company. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department purchased the 311,000 acre ranch in 1988. It opened on a limited basis in 1991 and opened fully to the public in 2007. We tried to keep everything as original as possible, I and mean, we still have a lot of Longhorn that are out here. The Longhorn are part of our history in Texas, and uh, you know, it's part of what made Texas what it is today. There are relics of this ranching history throughout the park, from corrals and water troughs, to sheep and goat pens, to windmills and ranch houses. Ranch equipment can be found throughout the park. The state maintains the feel of the ranch environment and the historic significance of the artifacts and still allows cattle to graze. There are also a number of Native American sites throughout the park, from campsites to rock art sites. Some are accessible, while most are not publicized to protect them. The Indians were here you know, thousands of years ago, and they left a lot of traces of that. There's some of their uh, pictographs are, are really fantastic. There are two main ways to access the interior of the park. On the west side, take US Highway 67 South from Marfa to Presidio. Check in at Fort Leeton State Historic Site. 
Then take Farm to Market 170 east to Casa Piedra Road, which connects to the main park road and the park headquarters at the Sauceda Ranger Station. The second way is from the east side. Take State Highway 118 south from Alpine to Terlingua. Then take FM 170 west along the Rio Grande and check in at Barton Warnock Visitor Center. Then continue to Bofacios Road, which connects to the main park road and Sauceda. There is no way to get to Sauceda or the interior of the park from the east side. If accessing the park on the west side, you can get your camping permits and information at Fort Leeton State Historic Site Visitor Center in Presidio. If accessing from the east side, you can get everything from Barton Warnock Visitor Center in Lajitas. Keep in mind that you can't just show up at your campsite, even with a reservation. You must get your permits at one of the visitor centers before camping anywhere in the park. If you are coming in late in the day, it's best to get to one of the visitor centers as soon as possible before closing time, 4.30 p.m. for the east and west visitor centers, or have an alternate place to camp before entering the park the next day. Two places that I recommend are Los Alamos Ranch, just outside the north side of the park, and Mel's Place, near Studi View. Both offer primitive camping and cabin rentals at reasonable rates. Reservations are needed, and links are in the description. The main road, via Casa Piedra Road, is 27 miles from FM 170 to the Sauceda Ranger Station, and 25 miles via Bofacios Road. Either drive takes about an hour and a half. Here are some driving times and distances. Keep in mind that driving in the park usually takes longer than you would think. Watch for cattle and wildlife along the roadways. There are three visitor centers in the park, Barton Warnock Visitor Center in Lajitas, Fort Leeton State Historic Site in Presidio, and the Ranger Station at the Sauceda Headquarters. One of these should be your first stop when visiting the park. Barton Warnock and Fort Leeton both close at 4.30 p.m. year-round. You must check in, pay your fees, and get your permits at Barton Warnock or Fort Leeton before entering the interior of the park. Sauceda, previously the main visitor center, is now closed for permitting and gift shop items, although staff is still on site to answer questions. Understand the permit process for campsites. You must check in at either Barton Warnock or Fort Leeton visitor centers prior to going to your campsite, even if you have a reservation. The main thing I would want to get out to people that are thinking about coming to Big Grand Ranch State Park is to research it, give us a call, go on the websites, um, you know, Google is a good place as well, and then of course you can come up here to Sauceda Ranger Station and um, we'll give you all the information that you're going to need and we'll keep you safe. And we also like to have people file a plan of what they're going to be doing so we know where they're hiking so if something does happen, we know a general area that they were last known to be. You will fill out an itinerary form allowing the park staff to know where you are at all times. Budget plenty of time to speak with the staff as they are a valuable resource of current information on all facets of the park. Ask the staff. We have an incredible friendly staff here that is very knowledgeable, uh, lots of experience. Some have been here for 20 years. We want inexperienced visitors to 
ask a lot of questions. It's okay. You know, there's a lot of things in this life that you and I don't know how to do. You must also return to a visitor center each time you change campsites. The visitor centers have very few supplies, and you should bring what you need with you. They do have portable toilets and toilet bags, maps, books, souvenirs, and gifts. No food is available, although Sauceda does have ice. Sauceda also has restrooms and free showers. The entrance fee is $5 per person per day for those 13 and over. The entrance fee is waived for those with an annual Texas State Park Pass. Most drive-up campsites are $12 per night. There is now a two-vehicle limit for every individual campsite. Trailers count as a vehicle. The limit for group sites varies by site, so check with a visitor center before reserving. There may be additional fees for extra vehicles. The number of people per campsite is limited as well and varies from site to site. It is best to call the park directly and let them know what you want to do. Calling the Texas State Park Reservation Line goes to Austin and they really don't know the park so the best option is to call the park directly and get their advice, then reserve by phone or online. The park offers many camping options. There are 48 individual campsites in the park. Most sites can accommodate up to eight people. There are also several group sites, which can accommodate more people and more vehicles. There are three small campgrounds and one group campsite along the Rio Grande, each offering a few individual campsites. come out here you feel like you're alone and our campsites are built in such a way that they're miles apart and it takes sometimes two hours to get to different campsites. There are a few sites that are accessible to passenger vehicles along the river road and the main road in the park but most sites require four-wheel drive and or high clearance to access. They are very much primitive camping site, so you have to bring everything in, basically. And you also have that, that solitude. You have that feeling of you're here by yourself out there. All sites have one or more picnic tables. Many have shade structures and fire rings. Some have water and or toilet facilities. Many do not. Some can even accommodate equestrians. If the campsite does not have toilet facilities, you will be required to provide your own. The staff checks this. Be sure to check with the park staff if you have questions about any campsite or consult the campsite guidebook. A link is in the description. Be advised that the campsite guide has not been updated with the current vehicle limits. Most sites are limited to eight people. Some can accommodate up to 12. For larger groups, check with one of the ranger stations or reserve multiple sites. So you have to detach completely. And uh, I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. Lodging is also available at the Sauceda Bunkhouse.
Backcountry exploring is a big part of the attraction of the park. There are 153 miles of maintained and unmaintained roads in the interior of the park. Of these, approximately 70 miles are unmaintained and require either high clearance, four-wheel drive, or both. You need to have a, a vehicle that is built for the high clearance and for the most likely the four-wheel drive that you're going to need to get around in this park. The roads are well marked and a map and compass, GPS, or phone or tablet-based navigation app will help to keep you oriented. Some roads are very narrow with brush encroaching on the road. Brush scratches on your vehicle are common away from the main park road. I highly recommend reading the Backcountry Road Guide and following the recommendations there. This guide offers detailed descriptions and directions for the roads in the park. As always, go prepared with proper equipment and supplies, plenty of water, and the means to recover yourself if you get stuck. If possible, avoid going alone. Having another vehicle along can dramatically improve your chances of recovery or rescue if things get difficult. Consult the four-wheel drive road guide for recommendations on what to carry, but at a minimum you should carry a map and compass, GPS, a spare tire and the means to change it on uneven ground, food and water, first aid kit and fire extinguisher, basic recovery gear, and plenty of fuel. There is no fuel available in the park. The nearest gas stations are in Presidio, Lajitas, or Studi Butte. You should consider filling up at one of these before entering the interior of the park. There's a lot of people that have this idea of what this park is. Some people research better than others. And this environment is unforgiving. And some people don't take that in consideration. And so knowledge is important to prepare yourself with and also the equipment to prepare yourself with. Here is a list of items you should bring along for your trip. You could certainly add to this list as needed. It requires the right equipment and skill, okay? It's fun, you know, you're, you're kind of putting yourself through a challenge, uh, uh, pushing your, your, your equipment, your, your skill set. The park offers roads from very mild to very challenging. If you are looking for difficult trails, ask the park staff. Um, the Cienegas have a lot to offer if you really like that desert uh, off-road type stuff. Of course, Mexicano Hill, that'll get your heart pumping a little bit. Please do not leave the established roadway to go around an obstacle on a difficult road. You must stay on the road. We totally discourage anybody from going around an obstacle, okay? Because now you're damaging desert, the plants. And so we want you to stay on what was the original road. Sometimes, you, you know, you got to be careful on how you negotiate that. And of course, our most famous is the road to nowhere. For hikers and bikers, there are 238 miles of multi-use trails. These are open to hikers, mountain bikers, and horseback riders. There are trails for all ages and abilities, and they offer a close-up look at the natural surroundings of the park.
experienced hikers can explore cross country. The backcountry packing is very big here at Big Man Ranch State Park. It's becoming more and more popular. And of course, our mountain biking is probably one of the biggest draws as well. The natural beauty of this desert ranch surrounds you. The park is diverse in geology, wildlife, birds, plants, and insects. From the flat irons of the Solitario to the deep canyons along the Rio Grande, the geologic history of the area is evident wherever you look. We do have a lot of geological uh, people that come out here that are uh, geologists by trade or by hobby. And they come from Austin, Houston, and everywhere, everywhere in between. And uh, they like to come out and look at all the different formations. And they discuss things amongst each other and just kind of have a uh, like get, get togethers here at our bunkhouse. Though they are all around, wild animals are rarely seen. Occasionally you might catch sight of a coyote or jackrabbit, but count yourself lucky if you do. Mule deer, bighorn sheep, mountain lions, javelina, and bears are all here. Wherever you go, you will see and hear birds. From hawks to quail, doves to roadrunners, there are many bird species to see and hear in the park. Vegetation in the park is typical of the Chihuahuan Desert. Creosote bush and many varieties of cactus are all around. Acatillo, Lechuguilla, and Sotol are found at all levels of the park.
Riparian woodlands consist mostly of cottonwood or alamo trees and are present along the creeks and streams of the park as well. Many varieties of wildflowers are found throughout the park during the late spring and summer wet season. Amongst all the beauty, this desert environment holds the potential for many hazards. Just about everything out here in this desert will either poke you, scratch you, or bite you, or sting you. On moonless nights, the stars are truly big and bright. Big Bend Ranch State Park is recognized as an international dark sky park, and as such, offers some of the best stargazing and astrophotography in the country. Horses and mules are allowed on most trails in the park, and several campsites have pens for keeping your horses. That is it's a draw. Uh, we do get people from all over the country that will come down here and on horseback and, and do a lot of different trail rides. Local outfitters can supply horses if you don't have your own. A link is in the description. Along the Rio Grande, there are several access points to kayak, canoe, picnic, and fish. Of course, on the river, uh, is a different, it's a different system, ecosystem, if you will, on the Rio Grande. So you have uh, down there, you've got the river rafting if you want to do that, kayaking, canoeing, um, and that's a lot of fun. Outfitters can supply needed gear if you don't have your own. Links are in the description. Pets must be on leash, in a vehicle, or in a crate at all times. Pets cannot be left unattended. Always pick up your pet's waste and put it in the trash. Dogs are only allowed up to a quarter mile from campsites or roads and are not allowed on any hiking trails except the closed canyon and hoodoos trails near the river. There are other rules about pets, so check the park website. A link is in the description. Oh. 
The coolest times of the year are November to February, and these times are the most popular. October is starting to get nice. The best is November, December, January. February is really good too. Visitation drops sharply in the warmer months. Late summer is the monsoon season with frequent thunderstorms and sometimes heavy rains. This causes the desert to green and bloom and you can often have the park to yourself. Do not cross flooded washes. No, I don't I want to discourage people from coming out when it's hot because it blooms out here. And it's an amazing place because you see this, this change, you know, from this brown and tans to all these greens and pinks and blues. And it's really interesting to see that. We are at least about nine degrees cooler here at our elevation at 4,200 feet. We're down on the desert floor, you know, it's much hotter. Nighttime is it's beautiful. It really is a beautiful place to be under the stars. I recommend you go anytime. Warmer months offer vastly different views of the vegetation and wildlife. Having a way to communicate with the outside world is vital for your safety. Understand that your cell phone doesn't work most anywhere in the park. You might get a brief signal in a few places, but nothing is reliable. For group communications on the trail, CB radio, amateur or ham radio, GMRS radio, and others will work well. For emergency communication, satellite communicator devices like the spot device, sat phone, or ham radio are your best bet. A satellite-based personal locator beacon, spot device, or Garmin inReach will allow emergency messaging one or two ways with your position information also transmitted. These allow you to push an emergency SOS button to call for help. For ham radio users, there is a repeater network in the Big Bend area, although coverage is not consistent in the park and will vary with terrain and your location. The link for more information is in the description. Drone use is only by permit well in advance from the park superintendent and is subject to special rules. Plan to leave your drone in its case. The main thing we want from visitors when they come out here is to understand when they're here, um, they're part of this very sensitive ecosystem and to enjoy it but to, and take care of it. And it's so big, you, you can't see the whole place in one weekend. safe place to bring your family and to enjoy nature. It's, it's just a great place for a family to get back to, with each other, pay attention to one another. Lots of opportunities, lots of things to do if you, you enjoy the outdoors. Come to Big Bend Ranch State Park, enjoy your visit safely, and start a tradition to return for years to come.